welcome. Number 71, episode number 71 of Line of Basketball Podcast. As I have this cool little graphic thing, I'm just going to throw up here and mute our mics for a sec. Whoa, that was fancy, huh? We're really what becoming it? professionals. 70 I episodes mean, in. It, it's taken a while to uh, to figure that, you know, part of it out. And, uh, you know, I think we have to really – to perfection, I think. And I think that, you know, this season's going to prove that when it comes to professionalism, we are really what you look at. Like if you're a podcast looking to be, you know, big time like us, you might want to look at what we do. But anyway, um, notch. after that, uh, you know, the, the season does start pr- pretty quickly. Less than 30 days. We are really creeped up. Really creeped be up. Watching I, don't, long night basketball. I don't feel like I'm prepared as much as I was last year. I don't know. Well, I think it was the the weight, you know, we didn't have the tournament and then, you know, we go into basketball and we were all really excited. And this year, you know, we, we just been really excited about Illinois football and how, wait. Uh, yeah, they look yeah. good. Uh-huh. Yep. So. Good thing we don't waste time. Yeah. With that, with I, that I mean, I know how many times you say trash during this one. I couldn't imagine if we did a football podcast. I'm just glad that number one, I don't care at all what they do. And number two, um, you know, they made Wisconsin look good. So good for them. And and I thought that after they beat Charlotte, they were going to get hot, watch out. They might win every single game for the rest of the year. Uh-huh. Doesn't happen. So I feel like I wonder if uh, Brett Bielma is going to be similar to Underwood, though. I kind of feel that. Not like they're never. Turn the program around. I think he's got a chance. Like turn it around to where they can get a low level bowl game every year. Okay. At least I think I mean, that's all Illinois fans want, right? I mean they haven't been good. Bowl games. I they don't haven't know. been legitimately good in 13 years. But anyway, enough sure. time wasted on that trash. Yeah. Um, Anyways. Yeah. Recruiting, I guess is where recruiting, we're yeah, I know. The stuff you love. Um well, it's very important. It's been a while uh since uh we've had one it's been a month, month plus since we've done one of these. So Illinois has made a lot of offers out there. Uh, just going to run down a few of them. Uh, William Berg out of Sweden. He's class of 22, uh, seven foot two, 265 pound center. Uh, he's got offers from Iona, Purdue, UC Riverside, Utah State, Providence. Um, yeah, Illinois has been missing out on a lot of big men. So I, this guy looks really good. He seems versatile, looks like he can spread the floor. Um, I'm just kind of worried about Purdue. Purdue always se- seems to land the big guys. Uh, I was looking at their roster. They currently have four guys over six nine right now. Uh, of course, the biggest one being Edie. But uh, we'll see what happens. Um, another class of twenty two, uh, Keyshawn Hill or Keyshawn Hall. Uh, Illinois made an offer to him. He's six seven two fifty five. Got him as a small forward, power forward. Uh, I think he's currently playing in Ohio. Uh, according to everything I saw, he's unranked right now. Uh, offers also include Texas A&M, Austin P, Bowling Green, and East Carolina. So um, if Illinois is really interested, I think they probably have a good shot at him. But, you know, as recruiting goes, things change. Players get better ranks. Um, people go wherever they're told to go. I don't really know how that <laughs> works, but it is what it is. Uh, another big man Illinois offered for the class of 22 Adrami Diangu. I feel like I got that right. Nailed it. I think you did. Yeah. Um, seven foot, 185. So skinny guy um, for seven foot. He's He is a three star and he's the 27th uh, nationally ranked center right now. Okay. Hang on. So, tall and 185. That's, yes. There's no way in hell that's a real person. Yeah. Seven foot under 200 pounds. Yeah. No way. That's what it said. So, yeah, I don't have any interest in this guy. Unless two four sevens lying to us. And so. it's not like he's class of 24, he's class of 22. Correct. 185. Yes. Yeah, so. no interest. Okay. So we'll mark him off. Um, I think we should send that to Underwood too. No interest. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'll email him after this, see what he says. Very good. Very good. So uh, we had, there was one class of 23. A uh, lot of they've been offering a lot of centers. Austin Parks. Uh, 6'9", 240, so he's a little bit bigger than 185. Yep. Um, also unranked on rivals and 247. Uh, he has offers, though, from Cincinnati, Michigan State, Indiana, and Dayton. So some some D1 schools are looking at him that are, you know, pretty, pretty big names. Uh, class of 24, I threw this guy on there because I, 
I don't know for sure, but Tim Anderson offered this guy uh, Trey Johnson, uh, 6'4 shooting guard. He also has offers from Baylor, Tennessee, Oklahoma State, Texas, Texas Tech, Texas A&M. So uh, Trey Johnson, you guys heard his name, probably won't ever hear it again. Anyways, uh, another question. he's going to the Big 12. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think he's going to stay down, down south somewhere. So uh, another guy, I, I love this guy's name, uh, John Uell. They call him Boogie, Boogie Fland. So uh, class of 24, like I said, 6'2", complete guard, 165 pounds. He's also unranked out of New York, uh, has offers from Bryant, Fordham, K State and Maryland. I think he just he, picked up an offer from Maryland. So he has uh, like eighteen to twenty point per game score for Bryant written all over him. Yeah, yeah. And then everyone's gonna say, "What the hell is this guy's name?" When they're like a fifteen <laughs> seed in the tournament. And uh, yeah, right. all right. Um, and then Illinois offered uh, some guys that are freshmen uh, this year in high school. High school freshmen. Um, these are all class of twenty five guys. Melvin Ball or Melvin Bell. From Chicago, uh, he's six two. He plays for Mean Street, so Tim Anderson connection. Um, other guys, Bryce Hurd, six uh, five, complete guard out of Chicago, and the last one, uh, very interesting one, if you ask me, kind of the most interesting offer out of all this, Jeremiah Fears. Um, when I first saw it, I'm like, Jeremy Fears' little brother has the same name as him. No, it's Jeremiah. <laughs> so um, I thought maybe it was like the third or something. But uh, yeah. So Jeremy Fears uh, Jr. is a little brother who Illinois is hot after. Uh, Tim Anderson has been over to visit him, uh, held some early morning or went to some early morning workouts with him. Um, his, according to Jeremy Fears Sr., um, he has said that uh, Jeremy Fears Jr. Again, class of 23 <laughs> wants to take – it's so confusing. Uh, <laughs> he, quote, wants to take the U of I program to the next level. So, sounds good. Yeah, um, no interest. We'll see what happens. <laughs> no interest in Jeremy Fears? I don't know who that is. Wow. Okay, well, I'm just uh, – yeah, anyways <laughs> – Moving right along. <laughs> you don't care. Uh, yeah, Illinois <laughs> misses out on some commits. Here we go. Uh, Cameron Corrin uh, committed to Florida State. Uh, we've talked about him, I'd say, probably every episode. Uh, yeah, add him to the list of 200 players we've talked about that yeah. we thought might come to Illinois. And and that's why we just kind of skim over this stuff and we move on. So, um, But uh, we talked about him and Chester Frazier having a really good connection back at Virginia Tech. Um I feel like Illinois is, like I said before, missing out on some big guys. Um, they also missed out on uh, Christ Wilson Essendaco, uh, seven foot center from Paris, and uh, Jackson Kohler, who is a four star, went to Michigan State. So uh, Illinois really swinging and missing. It's early, though, right? I mean, there's still 22 guys out there that class of 22 guys that Illinois can get. Um, the other one who, Apparently, you thought he went to Nova already, or I. What happened last episode? You made some stupid comment, but anyway, anything uh, happened. Cam, Cam Whitmore uh, commits to Nova, Villanova. Uh, I think everybody at that w- had anything to do, and you know, listened to Illinois basketball, kind of knew that's where he was going. But Illinois did make his top three along with North Carolina, so um, that's kind of. Uh, where the recruiting thing is right now, um, besides Ty Rogers, uh, Ty Rogers has uh, put out his top nine. Illinois was amongst them. Uh, like I said, we've talked about him. He's 6'7", 195, small forward. Uh, he's a four-star. He's ranked 54th nationally. Um, some people have him in the top 50. Uh, people, A lot of people are saying it's really good news. He did transfer from Michigan to uh, Thornton Township High School in Chicago. Uh, A a big reason was because his AAU coach, Ty Streets, um, what is the coach there? Some people think it's because they're saying that he's coming to Illinois. Others, you know, don't know. So I I don't know. But that's where we're at. Um, As far as Ty Rogers goes, I've heard that he's really good defensively. 
Uh, he he's really good at getting to the ball, and he has really good lateral quickness, according to Max Feldman. Um, but his offense is is a little shaky. So uh, I think it'd be a good get for Illinois. I, uh, it sounds like Michigan is backing off of him. It might be between Illinois and Michigan State when it all comes down to it. But uh, I don't know. He was the number one player coming out of Michigan. If Underwood can steal a number one player out of another state again, like he did with Podzimski, I think uh, he's doing good work. So, Jeremy fears the truth. Don't mind Ethan; he's never heard of him. Um, I, you know, I I feel like I've heard the name, but I also kind of thought that it was like a dude who is already playing college basketball. <laughs> Just you, also, like. you also really don't care about recruiting. You care about the current team. So. Well, I think that's fair, but I also think recruiting is important. You, know, you look at the stages of recruiting for Illini basketball. It's uh, finishing in the top three for guys, uh, getting guys to commit to decommit. I think that those are the things that, you know, we as a, as a collective group of fans um, understand is that that's what we do. You finish close, you're close to getting guys, you guys to commit, then they decommit. I like it. It's a good yeah. cycle. And then every once in a while, you get that big couple big recruits, and you build a team around them. So, really True. doing it right. Really doing it right. Yeah. But uh, this Jeremy Fears fellow, per his 247 page, I mean, it looks like he'll be good, but, you know, the three teams that are warm on him are uh, the Illini with Michigan State and Missouri. And Lord knows he's not going to Missouri. I guarantee it. He better not. Well, first of all, <laughs> seems like he wants to come to Illinois, number one. Yeah. Number two, 2023 lines up perfectly for him to be the point guard. Correct. And number three, I think I'm on number three. Um, <coughs> I think you're on C, actually. but We could go with that. Yeah, he uh, he goes to a, a, a thing that is a thing, right? So there you go. He's from Illinois, right? I believe he is. Mm, excuse me. He's from Illinois? I don't know. It says that you said you had his page pulled up. It says from Joliet, Illinois, but he plays at a high school in Indiana, I guess. Is kind oh, of yes, that's correct. <clears throat> hey, uh, Chicago yeah, State, yes. Chicago State offered him. Maybe they have a chance. He could bring their program back. Yeah. I think it would take the United States Dream Team to <laughs> bring them back. That's about it. And yeah. at Honestly, those guys at that age right now are better than Chicago State's team from last year. So you think I would say yeah. they're washed personally, but um, I don't think it matters. Did you see Chicago State last year? I did. Yeah, not good. I wish we could play them again, but I don't think they exist at this point. So, yeah. all right, um, you know, Tom Izzo, I guess, is who this next thing is about. Yeah, um, I, I just saw this. Uh, he was on uh, Andy Katz's whatever it is. I know. You know. Oh, let's keep giving Andy Katz more airtime and such, everybody. Even though I will say, during March Madness last season, he did make himself look good, being up there with Chuck and Kenny, who know nothing about college basketball. So that was good for them. Good yes. for him. We did not He's be a fraud. For still a fraud. A little bit. Okay. All right. Still a fraud. Anyways. Yeah. So uh, Izzo on this, and, and we heard we have heard this a lot um, about last year's Big Ten. Um, he said that it was the best best he's seen the Big Ten in his thirty seven years from top to bottom. Way um, to make yourself sound old, Tom. Yeah, you know, he said Jeez. that winning the Big Ten tournament was tougher than the national championship. That's BS. Thoughts? It's BS. Come on, yeah. please. Okay. Yeah, because here's the thing. When you're playing in the NCAA tournament, you're playing against teams that you don't know. When you're playing True. in the Big Ten tournament, you know these teams. I True. mean, it took me like two seconds to come up with that explanation. So nice try, Tom. Right. And so, you know, Illinois did win it. So I'm going to agree with them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and you talk about that, like you shared that thing Ant Wright had about how, you know, teams shut down I how Loyola shut down IO. And for some reason, the Big Ten couldn't figure it out all year. So Yeah, I think that that was also a case of uh, really, really good coaching, too. I think Correct. some of the coaches in the Big Ten are terrible, and I think we know that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to point out anybody specifically from last season, Richard Pitino, but, um, you know, that's just kind of how the Big Ten was. Yeah, yeah. Um, he also went on to say that uh, Michigan State laid an egg along with most of the Big Ten in the tournament. What, so, what's he trying to say here? Number one, it was so hard to win it. It was harder to win the national championship, but then everybody else laid 
What? He was. He's just saying that they didn't show up. So he said most other teams didn't either. So that just would mean that teams didn't show up, which made it easier for Illinois to beat them. Try to the who who beat Michigan State in the Big Ten tournament? Maryland. That sounds. It sounds one hundred percent accurate, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. I'm looking it up, and you go ahead. Please do that. Um, so this is where I I thought we would go with this. Um, after you got done ranting and doing whatever you usually do. Um, Curbella was quoted saying the other day, uh, quote, I'm not afraid to say we're going to be better than last year, end quote. Um, currently right now, most talking heads have Illinois as three in the Big Ten. Um, if Illinois is supposed to be better than they were last year, which, I mean, if you ask Illinois fans – they probably all think that Illinois won the Big Ten regular season. Um, you know, stupid stuff happened with Michigan. And if it was this year, those games they didn't play would have been forfeited. If you look at it that way, um, it even hurts a little bit more. But if Illinois is third and you got Michigan one, most people have them, Purdue two, um, you can flip those however you want. Do you think... Do you think that the Big Ten is going to be better than it was last year, or is it just very top heavy this year? Well, before we get into that, uh, Michigan State did lose to Maryland, so nailed it. Um, nice. I will say that it's, I definitely think it's a case of the top heavy because I think there's teams from last season that aren't going to be very good, aka Iowa. Iowa yeah. And I think there's teams that are were bad last season that are still going to be bad. Like Nebraska is going to be better, they're still going to be bad. Northwestern is going to be bad. Yeah. Um, Penn State's going to be bad. So I think there's only like five or six, maybe seven legitimate tournament caliber teams in the Big Ten this year. I think last mm-hmm. year you could have said eight or nine. I think seven or eight, six or seven. What? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, M- Michigan, Purdue, Illinois. So that's three. Okay, I'm going to write these down. Michigan, Purdue, Illinois. Mm-hmm. I think uh, – Ohio State. Ohio State. And I think Rutgers, with those two returning, still mm-hmm. is there. So that's five. Uh, I don't want to forget anybody. Maryland. Michi- Michigan State, probably. Uh-huh. And Maryland. So and I think that's it. I think that about does it, unless we forgot somebody, which I don't know if we did. I don't think we did. Well, <laughs> the other teams that it wouldn't be would be West- Iowa. Wisconsin, Nebraska, Northwestern, yeah. Penn State, Minnesota. So – is Wisconsin? Uh, I don't know if Wisconsin is. I feel like. Yeah. I also feel like the, I think Wisconsin is a team that has like bad season. Greg Gard gets fired written all over it. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, I don't. Wisconsin's one of those teams that you know, you just don't know until you see them on the court too. So. They sucked last year. They were so bad <laughs> last year. They were embarrassingly bad. Yeah. So they they, they did win around though, didn't they? They beat North Carolina, right? In the eight nine, and they got annihilated by Baylor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they they still they were bad. Yeah. Trice is the only reason Illinois didn't beat them by thirty at Wisconsin. Yeah. So yeah. So, I mean, do you think that you, they're not? It's not going to be the same thing. Where I guess the thing is, the Big Ten. They everybody talked about how strong they were last year, and then they go to the tournament and like Izzo said, they everybody laid an egg. I mean, pretty much everybody laid an egg. I, one team made it to the Sweet 16. So, yeah. And uh, uh, that was Michigan, right? So, right. embarrassing. So, I, I guess the, is the Big Ten going to be the best team or the best league this year? Do you think it's going to be the ACC? I mean, Duke is loaded. Yeah. Absolutely loaded. So, I think that. The Big Ten will probably not be known as the best the best league, even though I know there's always a lot of hype around the Big Ten these days and how good it is, and everyone likes to talk about how awesome the Big Ten is. I just don't – I don't think I see that. I think yeah. there's teams in other conferences. Like you said, Duke is, like, ridiculous this year, and I think Kentucky's going to be good again. You have to think North Carolina is going to be better than what they were last year. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in the Big 12, I still think that Baylor will be good. I feel like – yeah. Um, who's the other team I was thinking of? West Virginia, they're always a factor. Yeah. So, yeah, 
I mean, Texas, Texas should be good this year. Texas is going to be very good. Yeah. I, I, that's a tough one though. Cause yeah. you know, there is the hype around the big 10 every year. Right. And I don't know if it's going to be that way. I don't I mean, know if I'm going to hate that the big Ten's not looked at as the best, best conference either. I mean, it, it, it didn't work out where everybody thought they were. So maybe if everybody thinks that they're not as good this year, some teams can actually do something. So, but. yeah, I would I would assume it's going to be a three horse race between the Big Twelve, the Big Ten, and the ACC to control that narrative. But you just look at the Big Twelve. I mean, Texas, a lot of people have them in the top three. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kansas, a lot of people have in the top six. Even though Bill Self should not, you know, be coaching, but whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Florida State, ACC, still very good. Georgia yep. Tech is still good. Yep. So I think the Big 12 is probably going to be the best conference, maybe maybe the ACC. Yeah. But more more of that talk on uh, March Mad countdown to March Madness pre-show or something like that we might be doing later on. So Yeah, we'll be doing that within the next few weeks. That's a uh, easy plug. Yeah. So um on to Underwood, I guess. We're keeping him longer. Yeah, before we get into that real quick. Uh-oh. Um okay. I do have a little graphic thing here for the Countdown to March Madness. Oh. A little shout out here, a little thing we got going here um, with oh, that. We stayed so, on the screen for that one. Look at that. Yeah, that was an interesting one, probably because it's not full screen, I guess. But yeah, that'll be coming in the next few weeks. We'll do one preseason show and then we'll pick it back up late February, early March. So shout out to that. And uh, Underwood gets his 13th extension for the Illini. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I assume Bielema is probably going to get one next week. But, uh, I would have. I, he deserves it. <laughs> Two big ones. Um, no, Underwood uh, extended through twenty six, twenty seven. So we got him for five more years at least. Hopefully, unless I, he leaves. Unless he leaves, um, or gets fired, it could be disastrous. Yeah, his last season, um, he's going to be making four point five million. Uh, if oh, he cares. Uh, I think he's at <laughs> like three, they, three something right now. Or something. surprised they come out with these numbers. Four. I know in like professional sports leagues, they never tell you how much the coaches are making. You yeah. got to just assume. Well, I'm sure that there's incentives on top of all that too, but um, <laughs> Underwood on Twitter said, <clears throat> quote, it's an honor of a lifetime to be your basketball coach at the university of Illinois. Let's continue working together to keep this program at an elite level and atop the big 10 conference. I can't wait to see you back inside the state farm center this season. ILL. Um, his publicist or whatever they call it. Yeah. That. Whoever writes his Twitters. Cause he says that he never gets on Twitter. So um, well, whoever wrote that uh, it sounds nice. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. I mean, yeah. you know, uh, I thought he was leaving for Kansas state. That's just what I heard, but. Well, they still got a guy there. What's his name? They're still good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you know, you've sunk to a new low and you have Mark <laughs> Smith playing for your team. <laughs> Jesus. Oh gosh. You think Mark uh, Smith's ever heard this podcast? You think like one of his buddies is like, hey, hey these guys hate you. Hey, these two guys from, from the middle of hate nowhere you. don't like you. We don't mm-hmm. like it's not just that we don't like him, we hate him. True. I mean, just how it has to be. I'm sure he's a nice yeah, nice yeah. guy or whatever. I mean, I'm you sure know. he's nice outside the basketball courts, but yeah, I mean, he can't make a three. So <laughs> um a couple other recruit things. Uh, just uh, Illinois hosted a few players, uh, Oct- I believe October 2nd. Um, they had the top five 2024 uh, recruits from Illinois from in state come in. Uh, James Brown, Merez Johnson. Why do people have names? <laughs> no, no, no juice, no just, no just Indrasides. Indrasides, yeah. Cooper Coke. Cock. Cooper Cup, Coke. Cooper Cup, the uh, <laughs> receiver for the Rams, very nice. Didn't know he switched to basketball. And uh, Jaden Reyna. So um, Richard Barron was also there uh, from the class of twenty three. Anyways, those guys were at Illinois uh, unofficial visits, having a good time, fun times, great. Okay. Yep. Nice. Good for them. Very nice. Very nice. Um, <clears throat> Illinois had uh, an open practice o- this last Saturday, October 9th. At the State Farm Center, um, we did not, you know, wake up at 6.30 to get up there. Uh, I had to work. Ethan um, had to sleep or something. I don't know what he's doing. But was uh, this? Saturday. Oh, oh yeah. I was, I was way busy. Come on. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, so from what I have gathered on Twitter from people, um, Curbelo apparently looked really good. Um, people said that he was quote, putting on a show. Uh, they showed some video afterwards of him knocking down threes. Uh, that's what we want, right? 30% hoping for 30% from him. I think he'll be really hard to stop if he does do that. Uh, they said Kofi was doing Kofi things, dunking on everybody. Uh, Underwood made a comment afterwards that he's the second fastest player on the team. You believe that? I feel like Underwood always has these weird comments a couple <laughs> times every preseason, and I true. don't know if they ever actually come true, but true. we'll see. Yeah. Um, and and I found it weird. Uh, there were a lot of Illini faithful complaining um, that a lot of the, the guys that talk and the media guys – have Kofi as the third or fourth best big in the Big Ten. That is completely unfair. So who do you, I mean, Hunter Dickinson. You think they have Edie above him? I've heard Edie's been playing well. He's good, but I don't know if it war like it's a little disrespectful to put him above him because is Edie even gonna start? I mean, I know he plays a lot, but is he even gonna start? Man, I don't know. That's a good question. The only person that I would put against Kofi is Dickens and that's it. Nobody right. else. Right. And that's, I feel like, I feel like the bigs in the big 10 are different too. Like you look at Trace Jackson Davis and um, EJ Liddell, like they're not, they're not true centers. You know, they, they play the, the power forward, small forward type game, but of course they're going to match up with the biggest guy on the court. So we forgot about Indiana. Uh, they are somewhat of a tournament contender, I think. Correct. Um, but you know what Trace Jackson Davis is? And these are going to be some some hardcore comments, but i got to make them. Here we Trace go. Jackson Davis is a classic stat-padding, not-winning player. That's what he is. He's overrated as hell. He's not a winner. I'm sorry. He's proven to me. Okay. I'm sure that he's thinking in his head right now he needs my approval to, to win. I think that's <laughs> I'm, what he's thinking. I'm sure he is. But that's just how I see it. He had great stats last year. Was Indiana any good? No, they weren't. They were terrible. Yeah, okay. Well, Maybe maybe Mike Woodson's going to help him get better and become a winner instead of a stat patter, but haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Um, so nice suck comment. on that, Indiana. Yeah. Um, team stinks. <laughs> Go ahead. I like it. I like it. Um, some other things, uh, that people were saying was, uh, they were talking that people were really high on Goody, um, said that his D de they defended well and he, he was shooting the ball well. So, uh, I, I think a lot of people were high on RJ Melendez coming in. Uh, looks like Goody might be the best freshman right now. Uh, we will see who knows, get them on the court, see what they do. I don't think, I don't think, uh, I don't think an open practice really tells you how good guys are going to play when it comes to banging in the big 10, but yeah, I know by, by November or by uh late, late November, we'll be bitching about freshmen not getting enough playing time. So I don't think that so. will happen. We have no, I think many, at least too one. many players, too many players. To worry yeah. About they won't the be playing right enough. Now. And then, I don't yeah. care about the freshmen. People care. Let them develop. Oh, you're saying other people, not us. I hope. But people well, care. Probably you. Okay. Um, I, don't, I don't think I have a hundred. Really, you know. um, Alfonso Plummer, uh, according to Trent Frazier, uh, is he said, quote, he's a problem. He will be the best shooter in the country this year. Like I said, he's a problem. He's a challenge. Why do we need these types of comments? He's not going to be the best shooter in the country. Come on. I mean, he's good. He's going to be good. I think he's a perfect replacement for Miller because he does a little bit more, and I think he's a little more versatile. But why do we have to go to the highest level when we make these comments? It's like you always got to really shoot for the stars when you make these comments or something. Not why even. not? Why uh, like not everybody likes just having this. How about we just say all the time, he okay? could be the best shooter in the country this okay. year? Well, he could be, but he's not okay. gonna be, and you don't have to say he will be. Okay, well, he might not even be the best shooter on the team. Now we're now we hate Trent Frazier. Great. I hope everybody tweets I just about think that. It was a questionable comment <laughs> and a little far. I think you um, went a little, little too hard on that. And then the last thing I have is uh, BBV has dreads now. So uh, if you if you don't recognize somebody on the team, it's probably him. <laughs> yeah, I mean yeah. 
that was yeah i just looked yeah. at the comments section, oh yeah so, very blocking yeah. so yeah, was, um some some good news during this also uh the top three uh in-state prospects from the class of 23 were at the open practice um so we had the top five 24 the week before the top three and 23 this week uh that would include jj taylor who oh man i hope only gets them um, Darren Day Day Ames. I love Day Day. That name's awesome. Um, and Davis Lowry. So uh, <clears throat> JJ Taylor did tell Derek Piper of 247 Sports uh, Line I Inquirer. You're welcome. Plugged you. Um, Boom. <laughs> quote Illinois will definitely be in the top, top. It's Illinois. Um, and then uh, Kedrick Prince also talked to him and. Uh, JJ said, Illinois is my home. There's no place like home. Illinois was my first offer. There's nothing else to say. So, if he doesn't come here, he's a loser. Okay. Well, it's a lot. That's, it's a, that's a lot to say to not come here. Also, <laughs> I thought, I thought JJ I Taylor was a. I agree. That, that is a, that's, those are big statements. So, yeah, I thought JJ Taylor was a wide receiver for the Patriots, but I guess he hmm. isn't. So, I also thought Tim Anderson played for the White Sox. Okay. So. Their game got postponed today, so good luck to them. Yeah. They're gonna their season's gonna be over tomorrow, but hope you had fun. All right, wow. on to the next. Jeez. Anyways, uh, <laughs> Big Ten preseason media day poll. Uh, they had media day. You know, I think. Uh, well, I don't think Kofi and Curbelo were the guys that showed up for it. Um, don't really have much from. It. I mean, if you if you saw it, you you know what happened. What they talked about. Um, we'll talk a little bit about. Uh, somebody from a different team here later that made some comments during it. But uh, I thought it was interesting. They did a poll for all the media guys. Um, so unofficial, I think, is what they called this unofficial media poll. Uh, first team, all Big Ten, uh, our boy, Kofi Coburn, uh, EJ Liddell, Hunter Dickinson, Jaden Ivey, and Trace Jackson Davis. So uh, other than Ivy, who would handle the ball on that first team? But hey, you know, good good rankings. Guys. Trace Jackson Davis sucks. This rating, <laughs> this ranking sucks. Uh, uh-huh. I agree with the first four, no doubt. I think Jaden Ivy is probably going to be Big Ten Player of the Year this year. Um, but here's the thing, Trace Jackson Davis. Uh, you talk about overrated. It really doesn't get much more overrated than that. It really doesn't. I would put. Pretty much give me any guard from any good team in the Big Ten and put them in there over Trace Jackson Davis. Like Curbelo has a better case than Trace Jackson Davis. I don't want some stat padding overrated forward as the first team all big preseason pick. Also, did Andy Katz put this list together? I mean, come on, guys. We got to be better. <laughs> really do. What about Geo Baker? Yeah. I mean, hello? Actual good player who is plays defense? It's a big deal, right? <laughs> You you definitely want that. So yeah, I also disagree with the preseason rankings as well. So. Okay, so uh, preseason rankings: uh, Michigan was number one. I assume tiebreaker was no. Most people that got number one votes because Michigan had three hundred seventy three. Purdue had three hundred seventy three. Uh, Michigan had thirteen number one votes, and Purdue had twelve. So, uh, so it goes Michigan, Purdue, Illinois at three. They had three number one votes. And then it goes Ohio State, Maryland, Michigan State, Indiana, Rutgers, Iowa, Wisconsin, Nebraska, Northwestern, and Penn State were tied for 12th, and lonely old Minnesota down. So. Yeah, Minnesota is going to be brutal. Um, I, I do think that they're more likely to play for uh, whatever the coach's name is, Ben Johnson or whatever. They're more likely to play for him than a little weasel like Patino, but mm-hmm. – um, yeah, I mean, I like how I just said little weasel so casually, but I had to. But uh, okay, yeah. Here's the problem with these rankings. Number one, I think Michigan's very good. I think Purdue's better. I would have Purdue number one. Then I go Michigan two, Illinois three. That's fine. Um, Ohio State, that's a tough one for me. I like them, but I don't think they're going to be as good as they were last year. But I think four is fair. I would flip Michigan State and Maryland. Um, I would flip Rutgers and Indiana, no doubt. Uh, I would flip Wisconsin and Iowa. And then the bottom, I think, is fine. But other than that, it's not that bad. But I think there's a couple things they could have done. Like, I think Rutgers behind Indiana is complete disrespect. Even though Rutgers lost some guys, the fact that they're getting Geo Baker back and they're getting Ron Harper Jr. back, plus they have a good coach, that helps. Like, how many how many coaches do you look at in the Big Ten and say, this is a good coach? 
Juwan Howard, I think we we do view him as that. Yeah. I think he's a pretty good coach. Matt Painter, as overrated as he is, I still Been think doing he's doing it for good years. Coach. Yeah. Underwood, you know, we've gone both ways on this in the past. I think he's right above the neutral and good part. I think he's good. Okay. I can consider that. Uh, Chris Holtman, I also think is good. Okay. Uh, Turgeon, no thanks. <laughs> Izzo, yes. Mike Woodson, are you kidding me? We don't know. Steve Peichel, good. Fran, I literally don't care if he won a national championship. He's a loser. Uh, Greg Gard, players hate him, loser. Who coaches Nebraska? Hoiberg. I think he's a good coach, but I think that the team stinks, so I'm going to put him in the neutral. Uh, who the hell coaches Indiana? Chris Collins or uh, Northwestern? Chris Collins. Uh, you know, he's decent. I don't think I put him in the good category, though. I'm going to give him an X. Penn State. Who the hell coaches them? I mean, come on. Then you know, who's the head coach for Penn State? Uh, the guy that got in trouble. Is he still there? No, that guy's gone. They hired somebody new. I can't remember his name though. Penn State head coach basketball, Micah Shrewsbury. Yeah, we don't know. So I just counted what? One, two, three, four, five, six that I consider good coaches. It's not very many. Six out of my, 14. I don't remember the original point before this, but there you go. I I all I know is all I know is uh, some guys have been telling me for about two weeks now that coaching is hard. So um, anyway, is it, is it though? Hope he enjoys that shout out. Is it though? I mean, come on. We can Ouch. <laughs> All right. Well, football coaching is actually hard. I don't know about how hard basketball coaches. is. The thing with basketball, and I think it's rare um, in every sport, in any sport, the next level between college basketball and the NBA in coaching, I mean, you talk about coaches not mattering. The NBA takes it to a whole new level. Like, I think it's one of the only sports where the college coaches do more and impact the game more than the professional level. So, yeah, I mean, you look at the NFL, it's a completely different ballgame, uh, a.k.a. Urban Meyer, who's an absolute shit show in Jacksonville. What a <laughs> loser. The fact that he ever got hired is a joke, but uh, I don't want to waste some time on some Ohio State has been a loser. All right. Good. This is my section, stuff that I wrote down. Very exciting. Yes, all three things. Let's go. Too much Big Ten Network. That's my takeaway from this schedule. And I know that it's Big Ten Network. They're going to be on there a lot. I get it. I understand it. I'm going to pull the schedule up now. All transparency as to what I'm doing. I don't have it in front of me, so I'm going to pull it up. But here's the thing. Big Ten Network, they do a fine job. Good enough job. If Andy Katz is in studio, it drops the level about 20%. But and I think 20% is being nice. Um, that's, all, that's really nice for you saying that. Yeah. And by the way, the first exhibition game is in 11 days. So... Keep that in mind. Wow. St. Francis, Illinois is who they play, which it's going to be an exciting matchup, obviously. Don't they mm -hmm. play St. Francis, Pennsylvania as well this year in regular season? I believe they do. Um, Jackson State is the opener, right? That'll be Big Ten Network. But then you got to get Big Ten Plus if you want to see Illinois, Arkansas State. I thought when Illinois became good, we were done with the Big Ten Plus days. Yeah, Like a couple years ago, they played uh, – who the hell did they play? Nichols State. Yeah. On Big Ten Plus, almost lost that game. They might I, almost lose this game. Like, I kind of miss, like, ESPN3 at this point. Like, I don't want to have to pay for Big Ten Plus. For one game, too. I mean, yeah. come on. We can't find another network to just throw this game on. Yeah. Oh, by the way, we're looking for sponsors. Anybody that wants to sponsor us so we can buy Big Ten Plus? Much appreciated. We throw out your name like six to eight times during this. So, um, and then we'd also say questionable things that make people question your brand. That's probably. okay. We, but we, we would leave you out of it. So. And by questionable, I don't mean like, you know, serious stuff, but, you know, I did kind of destroy Calling Trace Jackson Davis and, out of yeah, nowhere. You know. But that was, I, like I said, Trace Jackson Davis hey, sure is a good guy. But we're at episode 71. People got to expect it from you now. So, I would think so. And anyone who doesn't, I mean, come on. Uh, okay. So in terms of the – I kind of want to tie these two sections together a little bit. Um, okay. Bef but before we do that, let's do the villains thing that I put because I found it interesting. Everybody hates Hunter Dickinson now. Yeah. I know he, I know he backpedaled in the comments. I'm sure the hamstrings are feeling sore after that. I don't but, think anybody liked him before he made the comment. So um, The thing is – People don't like him, but the good thing here is that he's actually a good player. Like, if it was a bad player talking stuff, yeah. you know, or an overrated player who wasn't that good, Trace right. Jackson Davis, um, if this was Mark Smith saying it, I mean, it'd be laughable. It'd be like, seriously? Yeah. 
you play for Kansas State. Do they even have a program right now? I mean, come on. Yeah. And and he did when he he said he said that the players are cool. It's the fans that he doesn't like. Like he got scared I don't know. that Kofi was going to come after him. <laughs> I don't know any it, like any player that plays for another team is going to be like, oh yeah, I love their fans. Like yeah, th- that comment really makes no sense to me. But then he added, they act like they're some powerhouse in the Big Ten. Um, so he was very good at contradicting himself. Yes, that's good. That's much. something you need sometimes. But I will say, in his defense, I got to defend him a little bit. Yeah, we are very loud for a team that I, yeah. they're good now. They've been good for a few years, but very loud. Yes, and, and it's and not I, a bad thing. But yeah. some people take it the wrong way. Michigan obviously has. I mean, we went into Michigan without Io and beat the living f out of them, so yeah. they can take that and shove it. And I think but, that Illinois has, I want to say, an older fan base, but like. People that remember when Illinois was, you know, they they it's remember much more 05 of, and you know it's much more were, of a, a St. Louis Cardinals type. And then, of yeah, to be fair. and then, well, and then we had to live through, you know, Bruce. I like Bruce. I, I'm not going to hate on him. Good guy. Then, we, Good then guy. we had to live through John Gross. Who's a and, bum? What a bum! <laughs> and uh, so, you know, they're happy. My big, my biggest takeaway is from this is, you know, Illinois is good when other teams are talking shit. That's all I got to say. If if you, they wouldn't be talking about Illinois if Illinois wasn't good. They wouldn't care. Did he make this comment about Minnesota? No. He made it about Illinois because Illinois is good. And uh also he hasn't ever beat Illinois, so well, hopefully it doesn't change this year. Um do we how many times does Illinois play Michigan? Once, twice, it is twice, okay. Twice, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think they're going to lose that CBS one February 27th. We'll see. A lot, a lot of time till then. We'll but, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't have anything against Hunter Dickinson. I think he's a good player. I think he runs like an absolute weirdo, but yeah. he's good. And, and you, you know, you look at a lot of guys, you know, that line I beat right or stuff like that. They love this stuff. Um, you know, well, they need it or else they're exactly, not gonna, they're exactly. gonna be homeless. So. And, and I, I'm not gonna, I, I like it. I mean, I, I think it's great that, you know, it's good for the the rivalry. It's good for the competition. You know, they want to say there is no rivalry, but they can't keep us out of their mouths. Be careful. So. Be careful. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I put who are the top three villains of the Illini. I still think Dickinson's one of them, but I really don't think there's anybody else that I look at like that. Like if Crutwig was still at Loyola Chicago, I mean, yeah, even though he I, only did it once. But. I would say that a lot of Illinois fans probably feel like EJ Liddell um, just because he's yeah. from here. Um but like we've said in the past, he's always he always wanted to play there, so I, it it is what it is. But yeah, I don't, maybe there will be new villains come out this year. Be yeah, I feel like Zach Eady Mark Smith be, be one eventually. Mark Smith, I mean, I I couldn't, you know, I couldn't care less really yeah. about yeah. what he does, and and he's kind of, you know, he's a clown. But yeah. who who's at Missouri that we don't like? Is there anybody still there? Quanta still got a team there. I don't. I don't know. I'm gonna look at their roster. Do they even play basketball in Missouri. Okay, Javon Pickett's still there from Belleville. Interesting. Yeah, I like Pickett. But I feel like or Illinois up. So. I mean, they all did. True. True. Yeah, this that Missouri team's terrible. I feel like they're gonna be a team that plays hard but doesn't win very many games. <laughs> As long as in one of the games they win, it isn't Illinois. So, that's all I can oh, you know they will. I mean, let's just be honest. Um, <laughs> a lot of time, something. a lot of time between now and then. But yeah, um, let's get into the other stuff, which was the TV schedule that I already briefly talked about. Yeah. But by that's the true. way, November twenty sixth, Big Ten Plus against mm-hmm. University of Texas Rio. Grando Valley. So they have two Big Ten Plus games? Yeah, but the good thing is they're within the same month. So you just have a one month subscription and you can watch both games. But yeah. Also I'll just steal your subscription. Absolutely. Are are we sure that it's the right move to put the Cincinnati game on ESPN News? Seriously? Yeah. It's what are we weird. doing? I, I know it's on at least it's on TV, but come on. Yeah. And then if they if they win, they'll play on ESPN two. If they lose, it'll be ESPN News. Elsewhere, they get an FS1 game early, Marquette, Notre Dame, uh, the Big Ten ACC Challenge. I assume 
it's probably going to be an ESPN U or ESPN two game. It has the three options for the regular ESPN and then two and U. But Notre Dame's not very good, so I don't think that they're going to be a headlining matchup on the Monday. Uh, no time for that yet. I'm guessing eight p.m. Just a weird guess. I don't know. And then Rutgers and uh, Iowa to start the Big Ten schedule December third, December sixth. So that's FS one against Iowa, which um, I don't think Illinois is going to have very much trouble with Iowa. They this should. Time. And if they do, man, what I worry about with that game, though, and we'll get into this, you know, in the preview in, in about a month. Yeah. But I worry about Illinois not waking up for it the same way they did when Garza was there and Wieskamp was there. Like Iowa right now, who on that team is still there? I think Bohannon's still there. After, yeah. After getting his ass beat. Year um, 27. McCaffrey's kids are still there, I'm sure, but come on, yep. I can't play. Yeah. Keegan Murray probably still there. He's a good player, but they're going to have some trouble uh, this season. Uh, Arizona, that's a Fox game. Get a nice Fox game in there. Then they got St. Francis PA, Big Ten Network. And then the stupidest thing, of course. Um, Tassant the still there. Yeah, he's, he's a good player. Mm-hmm. They're going to be very average, though. It's going to take Fran McCaffrey actually becoming a good coach for them to be a tournament team. Correct. And I feel like that's a tall order. Um, Very Missouri, tall. Missouri Wednesday game this year. So, which I, I kind Terrible. of understand. Well, I understand it because it's like, while I think December twenty third would be better, but they can't put it on. I mean, Christmas it's why the day before Christmas Eve. Yeah, I, I just wish it would have been the twentieth, twenty first. I agree. That Saturday before the eighteenth, but they already have a game there. Ah. Uh, St. Francis, PA, they play the That makes 18th. sense. I mean, at least that, you know, the next day is usually a. Holiday. And at least we don't have to watch it on SEC Network. And at least it's not 11 in the morning. So Big Ten Network. So it'll be a late night game, 8, 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Yes. And then elsewhere on the schedule, you got a lot of Big Ten Network, but also a lot of FS1 and Fox. They got a streak of FS1, Fox, FS1 with Michigan, Purdue, Maryland. Then, uh, then Big Ten Network really kicks in late in the season, which it kind of always does, but. They got some good national TV games. I mean, Fox again against Michigan State on a Saturday, and then CBS, they get a Sunday CBS game against Michigan in February. So a lot there. I mean, like I said, a little too big to network, a little too much of that, but I think that's always the case at this point. So Yeah, they got to make their money, right? Yeah, wasted on Andy Katz. (laughs) Um, While we were talking about this, I did see that um, the schedule poster uh, had – Trent Frazier, DeMonte Williams, Jacob Grandison, Andre Corbello, and Kofi Coburn on it. Starting five? Um, it's, a, it's a weird five to the, put on there. For the first two games before they change it? Yeah, probably. Okay. Who do you think is going to – realistically, who do you think is going to be the most impactful freshman this year? Because everyone's – you know, everyone's always hyped up about one of them going into the season. That's Goody, but yeah, it's always um, never that guy. I don't. I. I honestly, I can't say that I've seen them play it. I like. I, I don't know. I, Take uh, last season for example. Everyone said Adam Miller. Who was it? It was Curbelo. Right. Which I. Even, didn't, I mean, Miller was good though. I did not see that coming. Um, I don't. I, the thing is, I don't think that they have to be impactful. I think that's the biggest thing. It's going to be the guy that can come in and and do his job and know his role is going to be and not do, not try to take it to the hole and get stripped every time. <laughs> Adam Miller. Um, Jeez, ricochet shot. I thought I was the only one doing ricochets <laughs> today, like Andy Katz five times and Trace Jackson Davis. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think since I've said some things about Podzemski. Um, I'm gonna say that he will be. Yeah. Just why not? Nobody's talking about him, so why not? Yeah. Give him some pop there, and uh, you know, I know certain people may listen to this program that have an idea of what Pozimski is all about. Um, yeah. okay. Yeah, future of the podcast. I want to get this in there. You know, yeah. talk about some things. I mean, I know we didn't deliver on any guests this off season, which you know, you had to if you knew Price anything Friday. about the show, you had to you had to know that that would be the case. <laughs> um, <laughs> But we're going to be doing the same type of formats, I think, in terms of doing an episode either after every game or if the games are really bunched together, then we just do yeah. one for two games. And I would say, like, there might be some times where we just we go live after a game just to, 
let her go. Yeah, I think depending on the game, that would be a good idea if we yeah. don't do a watch party for that game, which I think the watch parties are going to be um, a little bit more prominent. I'm going to try to do a little bit more in terms of uh, how yeah. it's going to look, advertising and all that stuff. Um, I'm going to try to figure out some sort of setup that isn't complicated like last season, how I had to do the whole microphone thing. And uh, yeah, hopefully <laughs> we can figure that out. Okay. I mean, you would think so. Uh, the predictions podcast, I'm thinking anywhere from November 1st, November 6th would be good. And then after that, we would probably just do maybe a live chat episode like we did last season, right before the season, do one of those the day before the first game or something like that, which, yeah. you know, last when the season started last year it was Thanksgiving time. This year's a little bit earlier, so that's a less busy time at the beginning of November. So that's good. Yeah. Uh, then watch party wise, it's really all based on your schedule because I could do them for any game because I don't do anything. I mean, come on. <laughs> um, sure. I was thinking the Marquette game would be a good place to start if we do it. Mo- okay. Monday, November fifteenth. That is a six p.m. game, FS one, and um, you know that'd be a good game to do because Marquette doesn't stink. You know. They aren't mm-hmm. good, but they don't stink, and they got a little bit Shocker. of a new era there. That'll be yeah. interesting. A guy that, um, a guy that people wanted before Gross was hired, and I think he probably would have been better because how could you not be? But um, <laughs> couldn't have been much worse. Yeah, other early season, like other pre New Year watch parties that we could possibly do. Um, Cincinnati Hall of Fame Classic game could be an interesting one. That's on a Monday. That's the week after the Marquette game. If- if they win that one, the championship would be a good one. Yeah, that'll be – I think that's Tuesday. I think they're doing back-to-back days, so yeah. which is smart for them to schedule it that way. Uh, maybe we'll do one of the first two Big Ten games, Rutgers and Iowa. I know we could we could do Iowa this year because we don't have to deal with being pissed off about the officiating and the way that they officiate Garza, and there's no way in hell – I I mean, Kofi might have 40 points and 30 rebounds against Iowa. Yeah. I don't know who's <laughs> going to handle him in that game. Yeah. Um, and then Rutgers is always an interesting opponent. That's December 3rd, December 6th. So try to do at least one of those two. Then you have that Saturday game against Arizona. Uh, unfortunately, I won't be able to bitch about Sean Miller. That's unfortunate since True. he's not there. That's a tough one, but maybe we'll look into that. Um, and too bad Adam Miller didn't go there. That would have been interesting to uh, to see. Have yeah. him have a revenge game of 10 points and 3 of 30 from, from downtown. Yeah. Um, then the Bragging Rights game is really dependent on you. Uh, if if you go to the game, yeah, don't go to the game. You yeah, no, well, yeah, we'll figure that out. That um, was the uh, highest rated watch party of the season last year for us by really? far. In terms of views, it has like a thousand views on YouTube. Really, look at yeah. us. It's a big deal, probably because I, I said some some things, you know, <laughs> yeah, such as such as this Underwood, thin ice. <laughs> Yeah, that was the Missouri game last year, so he was on it then. But we're going to put a little bit more of an emphasis on clips as well. I think that's important because um, yeah. there is some some good clips from this program like this. <laughs> to smoke some weed and shut up. My God. That's another clip. That's so that's two one. clips right there. And then I also made this thing. Look at that's a, that's a cool thing. So, you know, we're really fancy these days. But, yeah, I'll hey, probably you're – the, You're the showrunner. I'm just the – I'll Good probably months. give up on the clips thing within the first couple months. Yeah. But we're going to try it Sounds and see if it works. Right. I mean, obviously, I mean, I got to be upfront about that. I don't know what from this episode would be a good clip, but I'm going to go through it later and we'll figure it out. I'll post those on Twitter, Facebook, and trying to get a little bit more traffic on the Facebook. I feel like our Facebook page has been a little bit dead for a while, but I also I don't post very much on Facebook on my yeah. own Facebook's account either. Hard, so. Yeah. Hard. Yeah. And everyone on there for the most part, and this is not everybody, but Friends this is the and most family. Part. And 90 billion years old. They don't know <laughs> what they're talking about. That's another. Yeah, like the smoke some weed and shut up was kind of directed at those types of people. Mm-hmm. Uh, the people that are in the Illini fan page things that don't shut up about, oh, Curbelo, tur- back in my day, the point guards didn't turn the ball over very much. Oh, <laughs> that's what they say about Curbelo. And that's uh-huh. what but um, right. merchandise could happen this season. I still got to figure that out. We got to sit down and talk about that at some point to kind of figure out, number one, how do we want to do it? Number two, um, what site do we go through to get it done? I think Smoke Some Weed and Shut Up would be a good first shirt. A Thin Ice thing would be as well. Um, you know, I got a lot of ideas for these things. But yeah. And like uh, maybe the Andy Katz is a fraud shirt. Maybe send him one. That would be good. He could get a shirt about himself. 
That'd be about sweet. how he's a fraud. I think that he is. Uh, maybe we'll send that to the Big Ten Studios that if that sweet. ever happens. But um, in-season guests. We did one last year that was Deion Thomas. I'd like to do something like that once this year in the middle of the season just to kind of get a feel. I don't know if yeah. it'll be Dion. Maybe he wants to come back on. Probably not. Yeah. I, I forgot about us. I mean, existing, there's some but, there's some know. ex-players that do podcasts and stuff that would probably hang out. Yeah, I, I think it's very rare, though, when you get someone that's good at it like Dion. He was very good with yeah. us. but um, fantastic. Maybe fantastic. Bardo. Maybe Bardo, we ask him. I mean, he does actively kind of do games and Mm -hmm. know about the the things even though we have said some things about him on this show yeah um, by we gonna go through 70 episodes though and find those he might have people he might have people that's true you never know but yeah i just want to get all that in i mean episode 72 will be the next one i don't know when that's gonna be i think we need to start ramping it up at some point yeah it's gonna be go time so you'll be seeing a lot more of us um hearing a lot more of us uh, hopefully it's all good things and not Illinois trash. And such. it might be good for the show if they're not as good as they're supposed to be, but I don't want it to yeah. be that way. I still yeah. would like them to be good. I think it's, I think it'll be fine either way, but um, yeah. Um, yeah. also uh shout out to Io DeSumo being clutch last night for the bulls. I know it's preseason, but it was nice to see. And his hair is not good. Needs to go back to the old way. Okay. True. Um, all right. Well, we will be back at some point for 72 in the next few weeks, and we'll have the preview and all the stuff that I just talked about. So we'll see you then, and, uh, you know, we'll see if the Illini don't suck this year. That'd be good. So goodbye. Later. <laughs>